Today's Mercedes-Benz interview of the day brought to you by Mercedes-Benz Dream Days. Mercedes-Benz Dream Days are here with exceptional offers on the CLE Coupe, E-Class Sedan, C-Class Sedan, and CLE Cabriolet. Going on now through September 3rd. Learn more at mbusa.com slash dream. Uh, Seaton, update the poll results because I'm going to ask Diana Rossini the uh, same question. If you had to pick one to make the Pro Bowl, right now we have Caleb Williams with about 55% of the vote, followed by Jaden Daniels uh, at about 24, Bo Nix, and Drake May. Mm, long shots. Okay. Let's bring in Diana Rossini, the uh, Athletics Senior NFL Insider, co-host of the Athletics Scoop City podcast with our buddy Chase Daniel. Let me start there. Who do you think uh, has the best chance to be a Pro Bowl quarterback this year? Well, I want to go with the people who know football, and those are head coaches who I've been talking to over the last week. Some coaches that I was even talking to over the weekend as they were waiting to go out and play their own games, and they had the Bears game on, and they were checking Caleb Williams out, and and he is as advertised uh, in terms of being ready for this offense, being pro-ready. And look, we spent the entire offseason – singing his praises, highlighting how good of a player he is. It was a short thing that Chicago was going for him. Probably about a week before the combine was when the conversations really started to pick up that they were definitely going to go with Caleb. And it was very difficult to find an organization that didn't believe that Caleb was the best quarterback of this class. So the fact that uh, he's already been able to, to start working towards being a starter and a ready one and one that is going to probably have a lot of success this season, especially with the way they built the Chicago Bears team. My vote is for Caleb, but it is it is so good to be back, Dan. I feel like it's been a while. <laughs> yeah. Last time we the last time we chatted, I think I was still at ESPN. I think I was in Stephen A's office with a cowboy hat on and a cigar in my mouth. Um, and if I recall well, I think we were talking about what the New York Jets were selling to Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay uh, on essentially, come here, you can win a Super Bowl, we'll give you everything. So two years later, two kids later, uh, we are back. Okay. If you gave the Jets a do-over, where am I starting? Would they keep Aaron Rodgers? Would yeah. they still go after Aaron Rodgers? Yeah. I've, I've, this okay. has always been a great decision. The way they've orchestrated this or choreographed the way this all came together. At the time I was on television, I was writing that the New York Jets are brilliant. They're doing what they should be doing. An organization that hasn't won a lot, that hasn't had a lot of success, is handing over the keys to a guy who knows how to do it. A guy who understands how to win, how to run a hard practice, how to win in big moments, and how to lead a locker room. Give the keys to Aaron Rodgers. Made all the sense in the world. But what I didn't see in the moment, as someone covering that team pretty closely, was that when you hand the keys to Aaron Rodgers, then all the rules go out the window, too. And I think the team ran into a lot of issues, not just in the offseason, but during that um, time when they were trying to build what they were going to be. And Aaron Say, at times, became a problem because that's not exactly what the head coach wanted to do. It's not what the GM wanted to do all the time. Um, so once the toothpaste was, was out of the bottle there, they, it was hard to get it back in. Uh so yeah, but he challenged. brought in players who, you know, he's not a good GM. Uh, no, you know, the no. players and, and, that he wanted brought in. Yeah, he wanted players that he was comfortable with. And it's not like I ever saw that list that he handed over to the Jets that he shared with them. That Most of them made sense to me at the time. This is, you know, Aaron wants to be comfortable. He wants to be around guys that he's played with before. Uh, with the exception of Odell Beckham Jr., I think that was really the only one on the list that he had never played with. Um, but the Jets granted a lot of those wishes, not all of them, but a lot of them. Uh, remember, David Bakhtiari was on that list. That never worked out. Um, and 
look, Alan Lazard's having a better camp now, but that obviously didn't work out great last year. He w- he wasn't doing much. Nathaniel Hackett is a really important element. Uh, granted, he was hired before Rodgers became a Jet officially, uh, but obviously there were conversations being had. Nathaniel Hackett's not getting the offensive coordinator job for the New York Jets if Aaron Rodgers isn't telling Woody, this is what I want, right? That's ex- He wanted his play caller there. And it still makes all the sense in the world. This offseason, the Jets looked into adding another offensive coach, though. They talked to Arthur Smith. There was a time where they wanted to bring Arthur Smith in to assist with perhaps some of the play calling that they thought wasn't as sharp as as they want it to be, that maybe Nathaniel Hackett was losing his fastball. Um, But that didn't work out. Obviously, Arthur Smith now in Pittsburgh, and he's got his own set of challenges uh, as we speak. I know you spent some time with Sean Payton, and Bo Nix seems to be picking up Sean's system, which isn't easy for anybody to pick up, but he seems to be thriving. When does Sean make the the call on who's his starting quarterback? Yeah, I expect Bo Nix to be named the quarterback over the next few days. Um, Sean hasn't done any media, I think, since their preseason game, so I'm expecting when he steps up to the microphone – uh, most likely tomorrow, I would see. I could see that possibly happening. Um, look, I spent two days around them, and Dan, there's when you when you stop by a lot of different camps, you you can, there's a vibe. There is there. It's it's not made up. You can feel it on the ground, um, and the vibes in Denver were extraordinary, from the head coach to the quarterback, and yet the stars of the camp, from my perspective, was actually the Denver Broncos defense. Um, yes, Bo Nix and Sean Payton appear to be a marriage meant to be. Um, Sean Payton joined my podcast, Scoop City, and normally I like to have my guests on for about 10 minutes. Sean was on with us for 40 minutes, and that's not because I'm, I ask good questions. It's because he talks <laughs> a lot. And when he's happy, he talks plenty, and he is glowing about what Bo Nix has been able to do. And a lot of it has to do with his experience in college. Obviously, he's 24 years old. He's had 61 starts. He's had the most experience. And going back to even that draft process, I recall, uh, you know, lots of GMs sharing with me and even even guys that were doing the work on these players that Bo was in that category of Caleb in terms of being pro-ready, right? A lot of these other guys needed a little bit more time, right? So, Sean's leaning into the fact that he can understand what is being asked of him. He's not panicking in the pocket. He appears to be a veteran type of player out there when you're watching him. And then let's just talk about this quarterback room in Denver, right? It's it's a bizarre one, right? You have Jared Stidham, who was with Sean last year. You've got Zach Wilson, traded from the Jets, now in Denver. And you have this rookie, Bo Nix. Um, and Zach Wilson's only like three months older than Bo Nix. So I say veteran, but it's not like he's this big older brother. He just has a little bit more experience than Bo. Um, And you've got Davis Webb, the former backup quarterback of the New York Giants, now the quarterback's coach there, which he's getting tons of of, of praise out there, what he's been able to do in terms of teaching this Sean Payton offense. Because I I asked Bo um, how he was digesting Sean, (laughs) all of it, from the play calling to just, Sean Payton, the, the the person, the coach, the demands, the standard he holds for a quarterback. Um, and, he, you know, he said that he just felt that everyone has been on the same page and Sean has been almost a better listener than a talker, uh, which obviously was the opposite on my podcast, um, that he's just done a good job of understanding what Bo needs. And Sean is supplying that. And Sean even shared that with his play calling. He's cut down some of it, to help Bo take this next step and get comfortable in this offense. Talking to Diana Rossini, the Athletics Senior NFL Insider, co-host of Scoop City podcast with Chase Daniel. Tom Brady over the weekend at the Fanatics Fest talked about the tragedy of forcing rookie quarterbacks to play early. Uh, seems like a little bit of hyperbole with the tragedy word there, but as you've mentioned, Jaden Daniels, Bo Nix, Caleb Williams, they've been quarterbacks with two different universities, two different offenses, and they played upwards of 45 to 60 games. I I don't, and they've gotten their money, NIL. It feels like they're more pro-ready than they've ever been. And I don't know if Tom is just thinking what it was like when he was seventh string 
quarterback in New England and moved up to be the third string and then eventually the starter. But is it a tragedy of what we're doing with rookie quarterbacks? Yeah, my takeaway from listening to Tom specifically talking on the topic was more his uh, experience of playing the position and the challenges it brings. And it was almost like he was admitting that this is a tall task. This is hard. I had to go through this, this, and this. And I think it's also human nature. We tend to reflect back on our own experiences and you sort of become the old man in the room, not that I'm calling Tom old, uh, but the way he reflects on his career may not be exactly the way the game is now. And, and I, I'll call them my football dads, the, the, the men that I've been around all these years that have helped me understand this game and get better as a reporter covering it. They would probably, most of them, the majority of them would probably side with a Tom Brady in, in, in this respect, because there is definitely, definitely value to sitting. I mean, we, we everyone uses the example because it's the best example, and that's Patrick Mahomes in Kansas City, having that time to sit and watch and learn and grow, despite the fact that, if you recall, we would hear during the season, during practices, from players chatting behind Alex Smith's back, I guess, uh, how good Patrick Mahomes was, that he was already blowing them away. But just getting that time to adjust and learn. I spoke to Jordan Love on Friday. It was such a great conversation about that first year. Not just the the uh, hype around him, the fact that he became this controversial quarterback to join the Green Bay Packers, knowing that Aaron Rodgers was obviously the starter and the Green Bay Packers did what they did um, at the time, the drama surrounding that. Forget that. He did talk about it, but forget that. For this, for what I want to talk about, though, is his – Ability to play in the NFL at that time. And I, I joked with him. I said, let's let's pull some some film of you from your practices that, that year. He's like, oh my God, please don't. Please don't. I, I don't even know who that guy <laughs> is. I don't know who he is. You know, and, and I appreciated how candid he was about it and obviously very confident in what he is and who he is now to go, yeah, I stunk. I was not good. And look, I can remember back uh, Jordan's first and second year talking to people in Green Bay, being like, yep, we messed up. He ain't the guy. Well, guess who's the guy now? Guess who's blowing coaches away? Guess who's understanding the offense? Really? Guess who is the clear leader, clear leader on the field when you're watching the Packers? And just from the way he conducts himself, um, and just his understanding of what his job is now. And I think him getting this deal done was, was the best for his overall confidence. And, and I felt it too, just, just talking to him. Um, so really to go back to your question about Brady, I I, I do think times have changed. Um, and, and it's great that this quarterback crop, we're going to truly see it. We're going to be able to see some of these guys that are going to sit and some of these guys that are going to play and more are going to be playing. Uh, obviously, as you as you pointed out, we got Caleb and Jaden. Um, I think J.J. McCarthy had a really good shot there before he got hurt. Um, I was with Minnesota the day that news came out. That was not fun. Um, you know, Coach was heartbroken about it. The whole team was. You just you, you felt it. They just felt for the kid because I, I do think the plan was to play Sam but JJ was making a strong case to get in there, um, you know. And then, and then now you have Bo Nix here, who 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 seems like he he won this job fair and square. Yeah. Before I let you go, you were talking about training camps have a vibe. Uh, you know, when you're defending champs, or you did well, or you didn't do well, and you go to camp. When's the last time you were at a training camp and you go, "Oh boy, this isn't going to be a good season"? Last week. <laughs> Did, uh, should we guess the guess the team? I know it's like go to my Instagram, look at all my pictures of all the different places I stopped at to show the world. Look at me, I'm working. Um, okay, okay so, everybody gets one guess. Hold on, Paulie. Okay, you, I'm gonna defend. You, hold on. Okay, but hold on. We got a guess. Okay, Paulie, your guess. The New York Giants. All right, Fritzy. I'm gonna say New England. Okay, Seton. Um, geez, I don't remember which teams looked at last week. Uh, I would say probably New England too, actually. All right, Marvin. Titans. Titans. Mm. I'm gonna go Minnesota. Great guess, and I know why you did that because you were thinking, oh, 
the day the J.J. McCarthy news comes out. Maybe everyone you know was a little unfocused. Maybe yep. they were all off a bit. Great guess. It was the team that they were practicing against that day, actually, and it was the Cleveland Browns. And Ooh. I just happened to be there on a day that the offense was just off. The offensive line didn't look as sharp as I was expecting them to. Deshaun didn't look like he had a lot of presence out there. Um, now, I'm going to add, I then returned, and it was different. But <laughs> to your question of, do you ever show up? You know, this isn't I, – I, I, I'm not a believer in, oh, every camp is so great and everyone is optimistic. Yes, people are happy. People are excited because everyone has the same record right now and everyone believes that they're going to be the best team. But the, the value of these joint practices has helped really sort of uh, burst a lot of bubbles. Um the question I, I would have preferred was, what's the camp I went to where I went, oh, wow. And that was the Houston Texans. Holy cow. I know I knew they were good when I showed up. I left like, and look, I went on a day that everyone told me CJ was unbelievable. Um, but I just was watching going, who is going to So you're to all stop? in. They're a Super am, Bowl contender. I am all in on the Houston Texans, just okay. based on what they're building. Okay, something even simple and small. This is tiny, but this is important, and it's been told to me by many people it's important in the big grand scheme of things. When they make good plays during the preseason, when guys are scoring touchdowns, backups, players that we may never even see again in, in the NFL, the way the sideline, the way the starters are running down into the end zone, and showing that support. Because what that is, that's culture, right? That's D'Amico Ryans. That's him saying we are going to be there for everybody on this team, not just the superstars. And I felt it when I was there. I had conversations. Stefan Diggs told me this has just been refreshing for him. He's growing up. He reflects on some of his younger years and just knows he made some mistakes and is ready now to to, to really try to be the best at his position. And based on what I was watching out there, he he's just been such an added bonus to this offense. Great to catch up with you. We'll talk to you during the season. And uh, good luck with Scoop City podcast with our buddy Chase Daniel. Thank you, Diana. Thank you. I can't wait for the aggregators. Rossini, Cleveland Browns, horrendous. Can't wait. <laughs> Diana Rossini, the athletic senior NFL insider co-host of the athletic Scoop City podcast with Chase Daniel. When we come back, a John Madden movie? It's happening.